Yahoo's. Yahoo's. You're going to have to earn your own medal, and when you do, you're going to mail that one back to me, right? Uh, See you. Thank you. This is more than a road race. You know, in essence, you know, I'm putting out a couple of cones, pass out some water, cross the finish line, give them a, a banana or something, they go home. Yeah, that's pretty much what happens out on the street. But all of you have come together in this community to make this magic happen. And it's so important. It's so critical what you do for this community. And that's what's going on in this entire industry. The walls of intimidation have crumbled. People are believing in themselves. They're looking towards this industry, this sport, to feel good about themselves. And it's so amazing what's going on. And when Bobby decided to do this in 1977, it was a defining moment in this community's history. It really was a defining moment. For me, when I started running the Boston Marathon, it was a defining moment because I had heard about it, I was 17 years old, and I called my grandfather up, who was a supporter of my athleticism, I said, Grandpa, I'm going to run that race in Boston that they run. He goes, oh, they call it the Cross the Marathon. I said, oh, let's go. Coincidental. And uh, <laughs> so, he, so he says, okay, fine. He says, I'll meet you at Coolidge Corner. And I said, where the heck is that? And he says, at the 24-mile point. He lived right on the course. I didn't know it. So I said, fine. I, I didn't qualify. I, I guess I was abandoned. Yeah. Don't tell the race director now. But I was abandoned in my first 17 years old. I wasn't even old enough to run. So my brother drove me up to the start, and I took off, and I started running, and I got to the 18 and a half mile point, and I'm down I went in the hills of Newton. Got taken to the Newton Wellesley Hospital in an ambulance. I got, got to the hospital, called my parents, and I said, can you come pick me up? And they said, where are you? I said, I'm in the Newton Wellesley Hospital. And they said, what are you doing there? I said, never mind, come pick me up. <laughs> so they came, they picked me up, they drove me home, and I called my grandfather. No answer, call him again, no answer, call him again, no answer. Nine o'clock at night, he answered the phone. I said, Grandpa, where have you been? He says, Dave, where have you been? I've been waiting for you all night. <laughs> Bobby Kern ran by. <laughs> you know, John Kelly ran by. The street sweepers went by me, Dave. I said, well, I guess, uh, yeah, I failed. He said, you what? I said, I failed. I, I didn't make it. He said, you didn't fail. I said, what did I do? He said, you learned. I said, oh, cool. What did I learn? He said, you learned that you cannot go along in life and set reckless goals. You did not earn the right to do that. You didn't earn the right. I said, you're right. He says, I got to, I'll cut another deal with you. I said, what? He said, you train is a novelty. You train, and I'll be there for you next year. I said, deal. Deal. Two months later, he died. Grandfather died. So I said, I'm going to run this race in memory and tribute to my grandfather. What are you talking about? I train, 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 train. I mean, I was on 130 miles a week like Ray Martin does in a day. And I was fit for that race, 1973, Boston Marathon. I was fit, I was ready to go. All of a sudden, I got a stomach virus. And I'm hurling and throwing up, and my parents said, you can't run. And I said, I have to. And this newspaper clip says, Dave, running in memory of grandfather. I said, you're so sick. And I said, yeah, but can you give me something that no one else in my life has ever given me? And I said, what's that? I said, chance. Give me a chance. Let me tell the line. I don't know what the day's going to bring. I feel like crap today, but tomorrow I can feel better. Let me try. Okay, fine. They drove me out. They dropped me off. I took off. Five miles into the race. Ugh. Awesome. They were right. This is terrible. I had nothing. Finally, I get to the halfway point. I see my parents on the side of the road. And there's my mother. Crying. Because she's so worried about me. That's what we do to people, by the way. Those nutcase like us, when we do these crazy things, we make other people, we put them in more pain than what we're going through. We don't think about them, we're just thinking about us selfishly, you know, go out and run, let them suffer by worrying about us. And there's my mother worrying. But there's my father next to her, taking pictures of my mother crying. And I just vindicated, I'm going to keep going, I kept going, I get to the hills of Newton, I'm doing the survivor shuffles over the hill where I dropped up the year before, and I said, I'm going to make it, I'm going to make it, and I get to the 21.2 mile point, and down the hill again. In high school, kept getting cut from teams. Always the last pick as a, as a kid. I drop out of my first Boston Marathon, I drop out of my second Boston Marathon. What a loser I'm thinking I am. 